Hello everybody! Today I'm going to do a product development tools tier list. It's the first time that I do one of these lists, so just let's see how this one goes. Maybe one thing to have in mind is that I'm going to do this obviously from my point of view, because I am just myself and I'm going to talk from maybe the experience that I have been having when using these different products. And very obviously I'm not an expert in all of the tools that I'm going to be talking about, so I have the experience that I have when I have been using them. Some of them, of course, I have been using much more in depth, some of the others maybe not so much. So I might be missing some of the better and coolest features that they have. So I have done a tier list from levels D all the way to S, being S obviously the best one, and the, the worst one. Uh, if you are not familiar with this tier list, what I will do is just drag and drop the different images for the different products so you can see what is my opinion of them, and I will comment. And here I'm talking about many, many, many different types of tools. So there are tools for road mapping, tools for collaboration, for communication, for planning, for different aspects of product development. In any case, these are tools that typically you are going to use for product development purposes. And if not these ones, you are going to use one of their competitors or alternatives. So let's get started. The first one that I have to review here is Notion. Notion, oh, let's see what I give. Four stars, I love Notion. If you have seen some of my other videos, you probably have noticed that I'm quite biased to this tool. I really, really like Notion. I think that it's a great tool when it comes to documentation, even role mapping, collaborating with others, working together. For me, it's probably one of the best tools out there. I, I really love it. It's not perfect. Uh, so I'm going to think that I'm going to have a little bit of a problem to, to, to put it in an S. Uh, if I would go just how I feel about it, I would give it an S. But realistically, when I think about it, when it comes to work, uh, how it works with, with other tools out there, I'm going to keep it in an A. And I think that at this point for me, one of the drawbacks maybe for Notion is the integrations towards other tools. And although they have quite many of them, I think that they could get better uh, integrations done. So for example, uh, seeing the issues that you have in GitHub, uh, maybe that could be improved and have a better visibility on the status and the completion level and so on. So the next one is going to be Coda. Oh, Coda is, a, is an interesting one. So Coda is kind of like an alternative for Notion. Uh, I have been using it for a while, but uh, I'm not feeling the love. Uh, <laughs> I have to say that it has some cool features. It, it might be on how we are using it or how am I using it that I'm not feeling that it's uh, getting maybe all its potential. But still, I think that I, I will have to see it. Uh, I don't know. I, I just don't see it on the level of where Notion is at this point. Uh, and maybe that's a little bit drawback. I think that uh, that's maybe just, just my feeling about about the tool. I have to say it has one of, one very cool thing is that you can add charts in, to Coda directly in the pages, which Notion, as far as I know, doesn't have. Although Notion recently has added this AI or Notion AI or something like that, that helps you creating templates or suggesting how to uh, design your content. And that is a really cool feature. The next one I'm going to talk about here is Grammarly, which is a writing assistant. Most likely you have heard about Grammarly. They, they have a ton of, they're spending a ton of money on advertisements. So most likely you have bumped into some ads when you're watching maybe this video or some other video on YouTube. I, I really love Grammarly. I think that the way that they do it, I, I just have to give it an S. Uh, there is one important thing in Grammarly. They know that we have a problem with writing and what they do is that they just don't want to build a new tool to help you writing better. They just go to the place where you're writing and they solve it there. So they go to Google Docs or they go to Word or they go to PowerPoint. They have the integration to all the different services and they are there and it's just helping you there. So you don't need to think about downloading anything extra. They are there in the most popular tools. And anyways, it's the, the results that they give, I think that they're awesome. Even the way that they are selling the product, I think it's great. Uh, something I didn't mention about Notion, I love the way that they do the, the, the sales. And I, do the, I love the way that they scale the products. So I think that uh, for Grammarly, it's a little bit similar case. 
But still, the grammar is just like, yeah, it's so well rounded that I had to give it an S. Let's hope I don't end up giving a ton of S's or A's. Let's see how it ends. The next one I want to talk about is Miro. Uh, I think that Miro is a great tool and it's kind of a little bit one of these tools that took the world by storm in a way that it's suddenly everybody had to use Miro because we were all working from home and it was like a perfect place to work and collaborate and to brainstorm. And I think they did a great job for that. And I think that for me, I also been using Santa's to do mockups and sketching like ideas and workflows, and potentially even UI. So no, that is not the best tool for that, but it's just so simple and easy to use that it, it doesn't work for me. And uh, so I would say that for me, this is this is an A tier. I think that this is a tool that is very well rounded and I really, really, really enjoy working with it. The next one I'm going to talk about is Slack. Uh, Slack, again, instant messaging. If you don't know Slack, I'm not sure where you have been recently. Slack is probably the most common, commonly used tool nowadays in tech companies, uh, especially in product teams. If you're talking about business teams, most likely it's not gonna be a Slack. Uh, but it's a really great tool for instant messaging and working with others. And, and it helps a lot to automate certain tasks uh, via all the extensions that they have. And that's great because you can get uh, pop-ups and messages that, well, somebody has merged something, that you should go and review it, whatever, or before merging, whatever is your workflow. It can help you understand uh, when something or to trigger maybe some actions and understand when some work is ready for you to start working with it. I think it's a great tool. I would give it a, an A still. I don't know if I would put it as an S, but I think it's really good. Uh, for now, I'm gonna keep it as an A. Let's see if I change my mind over the video. <laughs> Uh, the next one is GitHub. Uh, so GitHub hosting service where to host the, your the code that you're, the product that you're developing. And it also has some level of product, uh, sorry, project and task management. And that has been a really great addition, I have to say, especially from the point of view of how you work from a product manager perspective and how do you work then with the, with the engineering team. That has been extremely valuable from my point of view. And of course, obviously it has the whole continuous integration, and it probably has a ton of other features that I don't know about. But, okay, so I've used GitHub relatively little, uh, so I don't have a very strong opinion about it. But having said that, I think that I'm going to have to give it an S from the point of view of how well, like the community is driving it, driving it how well, it is uh, actually received a more, pretty much most of the software engineering teams, especially when you think about more like the higher end uh, development teams, they probably are all in GitHub. So it's kind of like the de facto one. So yeah, it's an S for me. Okay, then I'm going to go for Jira. Uh, so project, issue management, track it uh, for tracking all this work. I don't know. I have a little feeling that, okay, so I'm going to give it a B. And yes, as I said earlier, my view is very biased. I've used Jira quite a while ago, the last time that I really used it properly. I have been using it recently, but uh, definitely not so much for product development uh, point of view, but more like for task management, like my own task work. So I haven't used it directly with, with, the, with development teams. So I'm not completely sure about that. Yes, many people are using Atlassian products. It is great when you're using like the Atlassian suite and you're sticking to, to their environment. I think it works really well. The problem is that when you start to go outside, it's like a little bit of vendor locking and I tend not to like vendor locking. Apple, I'm looking at you. Uh, and so yeah, I, I would give it a B because for me it's not, not the best, but I understand for many cases and for many people, this. Is the thing is great, it works. Why on earth do I have to complicate my life trying to figure out how GitHub works? Yeah. Next one, Confluence. Ooh, this one, okay, now we are going into the ones that maybe I don't like quite so much. So I'm going to have to give this one a Z. Uh, 
So let's say if you are working with Jira and you're working with Atlassian tools, probably it makes sense to go to conference. Having used Notion, uh, I don't know, go to give it, go give a try to Notion and then you tell me what do you think about Confluence. If you're look, using Confluence and you think it's amazing, let me know in the comments below. Okay, now we are going to a fun one, MS Teams. Uh, this is a funny one. It's like MS Teams or Microsoft Teams. I, I had the feeling that it's, it's just one of these tools, like it's like a typical B2B business or tool that is just sold out to all the businesses out there. They, they are sold out to the management teams without ever talking with the people that are going to use these tools. And although it works, it has some really weird ways of working sometimes, like a thing that you can know, if I remember correctly, I'm not sure if they have changed that. I haven't used it for some months now, but you couldn't be into one team and then get alerts from an external team. So let's say that you work internally with your team, then somebody, you are in another team that is an external one with partners or customers. If somebody's work writing you there, you don't get alerts. So you might get an email. I don't like emails. Anyways, uh, Microsoft Teams, yes, okay, they have improved. And I have to say that for certain cases, I understand that some people like it because you can even have folders, some, some kind of wiki with the, all the documentation, for example, related to the project that you have in the team. I still cannot get to like it. I understand that some people will love it. If from my point of view, there was one reason I think that I did like it. At some point, it got to be too many tools to track and too many communication channels like Slack, Teams. Uh, probably there was some other one. I don't remember which one. It just starts to be a nightmare. Uh, it really made me dislike Teams a lot because it always pop up or it always, I always needed to go to Teams when I have forgotten about it. Moving on, Excel. Okay, so most of the people out here probably are going to say that Excel, Excel is horrible. Excel is not the tool that you want to work with. But I'm going to say that for me, Excel is an A. Um, it's not an S because, well, it has kind of squirks uh, and it's what it is. It's still just a table of, you know, a ton of data and it's not a proper database. And, well, it's what it is, but having said that, if you're not a data analyst or a data scientist or a data engineer or a person that is very, very familiar with using data sets or BI tools, business intelligence tools, Excel is going to be great. It's going to allow you to do a ton of things. And if you have not tried pivot tables, go give them a try. They might be scary at first but they're awesome. They, they, they can get you excellent results. And I think that that's the reason why many people are still using Excel. If you want to get data and even get good insights on the data that you have, it supports a ton of data. It supports a ton of inputs in, in the kind of database that, or table that you're creating, like other products are much more limited. I think that Excel, it is, it is a great tool. It is, let's call it an expert tool, not easy to use potentially, but this is still a really, really powerful tool for, for somebody that's just like a, uh, for somebody that's more like a data nerd and likes to just get their hands dirty with data and try to understand what's going on. I would say that go with Excel, you probably are not going to go wrong. If you want to get advanced, talk with your data analysts, data engineers, and try to learn maybe other things. So next one, Google Sheets. For Google Sheets, I think I had to give it a C. I, okay, so in all honesty, for me, it's a little bit like a poor replacement for, for Excel. It works, especially if you're not working with big data sets, but it's, it is much more limited in the, in the offering that it has. It, I'm, I'm gonna be tempted to move it to a B for one reason, because they give it for free if I'm correct. So you can use it also just with your Gmail account. Uh, um, and you can get some insights of the data, but uh, it is pretty limited 
compared to how you would work with Excel, in my opinion. So I would say that it's okay if you don't have like a business or an enterprise or somebody paying for Excel, which probably you don't want to pay if you are just a, 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 a using it for personal stuff. I would say that if it's for personal stuff, I would put in a B. If it's for work, I would put in a C and then go with Excel. That's my opinion. Um, then we have Looker or the one that used to be called Data Studio. I think that they just renamed it like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this belongs to Google and it's a, like a business intelligence software um, uh, data analytics platform. It's actually a very convenient one. Um, I'm not completely sure where to put it. If you hear here, I'm going to be going to the A. I, I, I'm putting too many things that I like. Uh, maybe that's not completely right. But I would say that Looker has a great thing, especially if when you're working in an organization, it allows you to just create a dashboard, relatively simple ones. You cannot get too complicated and too fancy with the data, the, with the, with the dashboards that you are creating. Um, if maybe I had not looked too much into it, but I don't think that it has a lot to explore the data. It might have more, but I really have not uh, get my hands too much into, into that product. But I would say that Looker is a little bit, um, uh, I would say that, that, um, I would say that if you are a beginner with uh, data and you are trying to build your first dashboards, Looker is a great place to start. It's super simple to use. And from that point of view, I think it's, it's great. And you can create already dashboards that you can re share with the rest of your organization. I believe you are, you, if you are using Google accounts or I'm not completely sure how it's called, Google Workspace probably. So probably with that one, it's included. Although, no, I think that you can use it for free with your Gmail. And probably you can even share those dashboards for free with other people. So I will go and check it out if you want to start looking into some tools to work with, like business intelligence tools that are going to allow you to create dashboards and, for example, see the performance of your product or, I don't know, whatever it is that you're trying to track. The next one that I wanted to talk about is Superset. Probably you have never heard of this. Uh, this is not a very common tool. I think it was developed internal initially for Airbnb for doing their data exploration, visualization, and so on. It is certainly not an easy tool to use, I would say, uh, but it's a very powerful one, at least to the degree that I notice uh, or when I have been using it. I think it's really good, but it requires, it has a learning curve, let's put it that way which means that it's not going to be easy to start using. But if you want to, if you have used already, for example, Looker or Google Data Studio, next one, something like Superset, it can be something like Tableau. There are many options out there, Power BI. I would just recommend you to go with that. I think that Superset is a quite powerful one, a very interesting tool from my point of view at least. And continue with the theme of data by SQL. I think that this or MySQL workbench, again, this is a, a, a really good one. Uh, okay, initially I will give it, okay, maybe I cannot say that I really, really, really like it, but it's very useful. So I put it as a B. Uh, you can create your own queries, query databases, and it's a great way to start trying to uh, get the data that you have from the databases, create those data sets that you can then uh, export to or take into something like a Superset or, or Looker, then I think that that's a great tool. It's a great tool to do just like this very basic exploration of the data, understand a little bit what data do you have, data types, what data, uh, what information is returned when you're querying your database. And you can even use it with Excel. You can dump it into a CSV and then play with data and try to understand and figure out what you can extract from it. I would definitely go and check my SQL workbench, especially if you're uh, working in one of the compatible databases. I would recommend to use something, if not my SQL workbench, but something similar that you can query the database, export to a CSV, work with that data, start to get your hands a little bit dirty with understanding the data and how your users are using your product. Next one is going to be Zoom. 
Okay, so Zoom was one of these tools that came up also free with the work from home boom. You probably know it, it's a video conference tool and you probably noticed that I don't really like it a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't like the usability. I don't like the design. I don't like, honestly, I don't like how it works. I, I'm sorry. I understand that many people might find it super useful. Apparently a lot of people find it, and especially in the US. Everybody seems to be using Zoom. I just don't, no, not for me. I, I don't even like calls in Slack because they're simple. I, I, I find the UI in Zoom like, I don't understand why it has to maximize all the time. I just don't get it. Why? I don't ask for that. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like it. I, what can I say? I don't have a logical reason. It just doesn't. I'm not in their user personas. Moving on. Workplace. Well, uh, let's say that I started work using Workplace recently. I never used it before. Uh, so all in one business communication platform from Meta, as they say in Meta, uh, I don't know if I would dare call it uh, all in one business communication platform. It's, you probably should never cross your arms when you are doing a video or when you are doing a presentation because it sounds like, I don't know, move your hands. I know it can be annoying as well in the video, but don't, don't cross your arms. It, it, sound, it looks offensive. Anyways, <laughs> uh, workplace. Uh, when I started using this one, it was like, Oh, I'm Facebook. <laughs> I haven't used Facebook for real in a long time. I have been using Santa's Facebook groups, but I just, I don't like, I don't like the way the notifications go and um, how things go. Uh, and this was like going back to Facebook. I was like, mm. no, uh, no, no show, no show on Slack. Next one. Work, uh, oh no, uh, this is Microsoft 365, the artist formerly known as Microsoft Office. So, this one, what to say? I, let's say I'm biased. And I understand but that many people don't love it. I understand that there's many reasons why you could go to something like Google Workspace because easier, especially if you are just a single user. If you're a single user, don't go for Microsoft 365 because you have to pay for it. Google Workspace, you get it for free. So yeah, go for the free plan if you're just using it for your own purposes as a private person. But as a, as a company, I still understand why you would use it. And I still think that there, there are many good things yeah, Google, uh, sorry, Google, uh, Microsoft Word, it feels a bit dated. Everybody hates presentations and so on. We can say many things. That doesn't mean that everybody and their parents are still doing these things nowadays at work and you still need presentations. Um, still possibly, it still probably has the best tools for that. Having said that and jumping into the next one, I would say that Google Workspace is a very uh, good alternative. If you are thinking uh, to use something that potentially especially as a private person, you don't have to pay for, and it offers pretty much the same capability. Although, okay, not so advanced, or maybe less fancy things that you can get done with it. But I think that you can get still many things done with Google Workspace. So if you are not a very professional user, then I would say go with Google Workspace, you're gonna be fine. If you want to do fancy presentations and fancy animations and stuff like that, maybe you're better with something like uh, uh, the suite that you have in Microsoft 365. So, mm, eh, I'll put it together because I think that for both cases, they, they are both good alternatives. And I know that I cover some of the different tools within them, but I wanted to cover them as a, as a suite. And I think that both of them are good. 
they're just maybe focused for different personas in a way, I and mean, maybe uh, obviously different use cases. So I would say a enterprise company business doing or wanting to do more the, the, the higher end or fancy stuff, Microsoft, if you're a smaller company or if you're a single person that you don't need to work with uh, like very complex uh, data sets or, or tables, for example, or doing complex presentations or doing not very maybe fancy documents, then Google Workspace gets the job done and it gets it done well. And in all honesty, I'd rather use Gmail than Outlook because search works. Okay, ClickUp. Uh, this is uh, one I, I really never used it in production, but I have tried the tool. I, I tried it a couple of years ago. But I think it's a really great tool for product management, road mapping, understanding the value of ideas um, and creating this a little bit the, the flow that you need for doing your job as a product manager. So I will give it a, a B. And if you're looking for product management tools, there, there are several others. I high tried in the past. I kind of personally put it there because it was so long ago I cannot recall much. It has some nice features like, well, you can actually rate ideas uh, by based on several criteria. This is a Quite cool tool, I have to be honest, but I'm not going to try to look at that for the logo now, but I will put it in the same range. And I think that there are several of them. Why I would put in a B is that the value that they offer, at least for me, is not that big to justify maybe the purchase. And in honesty, most of the work I can do with something like Notion. So yeah. I will stick with something like Notion and use it for product management. And I know that, yeah, it's not that fancy and it's not the same, but it still gets the job done and it, 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 it expands into so many different areas and it's just so modular that I'm not trying to sell you or try to get you to buy Notion. I don't get any money, but I really like it all. So that's, that's the reality. Okay. Next one, Figma. Oh, Figma. Recently acquired by Adobe, if I'm correct, if I remember the news correctly. Okay, so I am probably the worst user of Figma out there. I'm more like a consumer of the products that people are doing with Figma. I haven't said that, I think it's awesome. Clickable prototypes, mockups, even presentations I've seen done in Figma. There's just so many things that you can do in the, from the design point of view. And, and if you think about it, it's like they just have taken the world of design pretty much. Not completely, but almost. It's like everybody nowadays is using or seems to be using Figma. So, yeah, it's kind of like GitHub. It's a little bit like a de facto tool. And in, in, I love the experience that also it delivers for, for not the users of the tool, but for the consumers of that output of that work that is done with the tool. So what you can do with users, with create those mockups and those interactive designs, even to the point that I've seen people being fooled that thinking that that is a product that they have built, that they have built new buttons, that they do actually something, and it's just all cleverly linked mockups and journeys that actually make results that people are like, yeah, they, they buy in. Great job, Finma. <laughs> okay, I had to put this one here. This is an odd one. Notepad++. Plus plus. Heard about it? Most likely not. Maybe if you have been in the world of development or product development for a long time. But I just want to put it there because it's kind of a funny one. I used to be a software engineer. I remember that probably one of the best tools, if not the best tool out there to do search and replace, it was Notepad++. I was working with Microsoft Visual Studio and by far Notepad++ was better to go through all your uh, C files or CS files, whatever you were used doing, and actually check them up and do like things like uh, find or search or replace something that you wanted to change, some naming or whatever. It was a really, really great tool. It actually allows you to do even coding and development. It recognizes 
don't remember how many languages it recognizes, but it actually shows you in the formatting and in the indentation of uh, how you are writing and how you are writing the code. So it actually tries to find like syntax errors and stuff like that or typos in the code. So it's actually, I mean, it's a super basic tool. It's not anything fancy. It's the light tool. I, 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 that's one of the first things that whenever I get a new, a new laptop, Notepad++ plus plus is probably one of the first ones that I'm going to always be installing. So this was my list. What do you think? Uh, share maybe your list with us. Maybe share the, the tier with us. How, how would we, what would be the tools that you would be using for prod development purposes? Doesn't matter if you're a pro manager, pro designer, if you're a software engineer, if you're a data engineer, it would be actually really cool to see what you're using. Of course, I'm pretty sure that you're going to use some more specialized tools and maybe some of the ones that I'm using, you're going to think that what a newbie you are, you have no idea what you're doing. Hey, let me know what I can do better. Share in the comments below. If you want to see some tools that I've been using for pro development, especially for pro management, pro interview, go check out this video. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.